The first thing you want to do is to set your tank up on a sturdy table or countertop with the front in a position that the kids will be able to see it easily and make their observations. The second thing is to put the chiller in such a way that it can fit inside the tank without kinking the tubing. This takes some ingenuity. Note that there is a thermostat. This is very important that the thermostat be out and in the tank all the way down. Get the coils all the way down in the tank. In a 15 or, or 10 gallon tank they go all the way to the bottom. In a 20 gallon tank they may be up a little bit. That's fine. Now this is a, the way it is. It's not very convenient for getting to the controls but you don't have to get to the controls that often. What you want is the kids to be able to see in the front the, chill, the chilling unit to be all the way down and this black tubing not kinked. That is very important. If it kinks, we have to send it for repairs. You will not be able to use it. Now we install our under gravel filter. We usually put the um, the standpipe in the rear of the uh, aquarium so that it doesn't interfere with the viewing. And the filter goes all the way on the bottom. Now, if it can go in front of that chiller tube, that's fine. It's wonderful. This is a three-part filter in this case. I had to cut it and it was too short or someone cut it too short. So it's a little bit too short in there. So I made another piece to go over it just want to cover the whole bottom of the tank with the filter. Now you install the gravel. The gravel is a filter medium and it provides the fish the pla a place to hide while they're developing. You want it to cover the filter by about one inch. It takes a lot of gravel for a 15 or 20 gallon tank. If you don't have enough. Best thing to do is to go to a pet store and get some more of this rolled gravel. But you can use any gravel that you find. Now, this gravel has been cleaned, washed, and boiled for 10 minutes. You can see that there's a good layer of it um, in here. The reason we boil the gravel for 10 minutes is that it's been in other aquaria with other fish that may have been diseased and those diseases last a long time. The gravel never gets completely dry and they can stay there so we want to uh, kill all the disease organisms. Again, make sure the chillers, chilling units all the way down. We're going to put some cobbles in for a realistic look and as you just scatter them in the front any way you want. These have also been cleaned. you don't have enough cobbles, that's a good excuse to go up to the river and find some. You won't find any rocks in Visalia. Visalia is a floodplain. Once you have your gravel in and your cobbles in, you're ready to set your, uh, your pump. And this is a power head or a pump. And it goes in that little tube there. What the power head does is pull water down through the gravel up here and out here. So the gravel is the filter medium. 
The power head also adds air to the water. You know how important air is for little fish, especially trout and salmon? This is your air intake tube. It attaches to the top of the power head and when the power head is running you will see air bubbles coming out here into the water. As the fish get older and start to swim they'll swim up to it and just hang out there sometimes. Although this oxygenates the whole tank. So you have two cords to plug in. The cord on the chiller and the chiller is set for 50 degrees. 46 to 50 degrees is what's recommended for these little fish. If you want them to develop a little quicker, you do it at 50 degrees. You fill it with clean tap water, not bottled water. And you um, let the chlorine dissipate for a couple of days and that'll be fine. If you have to add water, there's dechlor in the packet. The other things in your packet and equipment are a, a filter, a gravel cleaner. This is a little siphon gravel cleaner. When you have water in there, you can fill this siphon and get it going. Uh, the, uh, you don't do this until after the fish start eating. Don't do it before they start eating. In fact, after they, after they start to hatch, they'll burrow down into the gravel and you would be sucking them up. You don't want to do that. So as soon as they start eating and you see them swimming, when they're swimming, you will fill this by dipping it into the water and getting the pipe all the way full. Put your finger over the end, hold it below the water level, and then when you let go, you better have a bucket underneath it. The water will flow out into the bucket over the top. As it flows out, it creates suction. You rub it through all parts of the gravel and you'll see the dirt coming out. And you'll see possibly some dead eggs or dead fish come out. If they're live fish, they usually wind up fine in the bucket. You can net them and put them back in again, into your tank again. But if they're dead, you don't want them in there for any longer than they have to be because they will infect the other fish. The other things in your packet, a turkey baster, that is for grabbing dead eggs. It's very hard to do, but uh, you'll get expert at it if you have a lot of dead eggs. You should have a bottle of Dechlor, a net, a thermometer. We, uh, we have digital thermometers, but sometimes we like to use these. It teaches the kids a little more about uh, the uh, way temperature works. So, and that's about it. Remember, if you ever have any questions about it, you call your volunteer coordinator. In that case, that's me, George Pilling. And uh, that's all there is to it. You'll get your eggs soon.